can talk us through the, the 12 days. Like, is it a, it, how, how does it start? What time of day? What is, what is a typical yeah, day so look like? Is gong, it a routine? The, yeah. The gong goes off at 5 a.m., maybe 4.30, and uh, you're encouraged to shower mindfully and, and get to a 5 a.m. sitting and you just meditate. This is the one in, in, in Lumbini um, until breakfast. And then you've got walking meditation to get to breakfast. Then you've got eating meditation and you're, you're honouring noble silence. You're not looking at anyone. You're just there to, do, to live like a monk and, and be like a monk. And um, yeah, you, you're basically mindful from the time you're awake to the time you're asleep um, at 10.30 at night. And uh, like any kind of track, let's let's think of my meditation as a, as a training modality. It sounded like there was a process of almost development on the. It might have been the ten day course where, um, yeah, there was a one method and then it progressed to a different method. So is 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 it each day? There's a theme to to the days. Oh, good um, question. So that third. Um, the first one I did, the Vipassana in, in the Blue Mountains, that had a curriculum. Mm -hmm. That was like day f first four days is the, the mind sharpening. The next seven is um, Vipassana. And the last day is Metta, where you're creating good things um, and putting out intentions in the world and wishing good things of other people, which is that loving kindness sort of uh, piece of uh, the Buddhists. The one in... Nepal, it was um, more of an extension of Theravada Buddhism. As a, a coach working in the world of performance, like you mentioned, that emotional home base and being able to reset would uh, be a pretty handy tool uh, to be to be your best, not only for yourself, but also for, for your athletes. Um, have you found that this has made an impact on, on, I guess, your performance as a coach? Yeah, that's a great question. Man. Um, so... That it, uh, through the meditation in the in the first um, in the first retreat I did, the the teacher would talk about observe things as they arise and know their nature and let them go with with an equanimous mind. Like equanimity was the thing. You don't judge it. You just accept it and you move on. Mm -hmm. And so that equanimity or peacefulness or stillness, observing, you know, things you see as a coach. Your interaction, so from a mindfulness point of view and, and building that self-awareness, how has that impacted um, working with uh, not only athletes but also other staff members uh, from an interactions and communications point of view? Yeah, I mean, I'd love them to be on this and say what it's like being with me. But um, <laughs> yeah. uh, for me, like I, my my experience of dialogue, problems, conversations that we all deal with in sport, whether it's funding, governance, underperformance, overperformance, recruiting, those things that I used to like walk on eggshells around, actually I can be with all that. And actually like, let's sit and listen for what the problem is. It's usually not what's being said and we, we can get to the root cause of the problem and let's, let's discuss that collaboratively and, it, and it's not a, a me versus you problem it's us versus the problem where, where would you recommend people start um yeah. and, and what's a, a, an effective way just to start building for maybe you want to improve your focus um mm. yeah from a performance point of view yeah i think it's it's good to recognize i think my when people hear mindfulness they immediately think meditation um and then their idea of meditation detracts them they're like i don't want to sit down and do nothing or um i think it's, a, it's good to recognize what mindfulness is and mindfulness is an interruption to mind wandering and we're very very well trained at mind wandering this day and age i think there's a statistic from i got this from um uh, yale the the science of well-being that 40 9.6% of our day is spent mind wandering and mind wandering makes us feel lousy. So, um, yeah, mindfulness is an interruption to mind wandering.